welcome to the bold analysis um a day after south sudan knocked out william ruto from the mediation panel there is another diplomatic storm that has engulfed africa and um, i've taken it because it's something that it's setting on other african countries but i'm i'm taking it keenly because of some development that was emerging um, and as a country we still us as political observers we still believe that uh, we still really think that we need to rethink our political we need to rethink our foreign policy we need to relook at it first i don't know whether it it, it, it exists in the if, whether we have one <laughs> i don't know i don't know if we have one i was speaking to my friend pauline and you know, I, was, I tried tried to ask pauline privately kevin do we even do we really have one i'm i'm thinking that we may not have any this is because we seem to be getting ourselves into some very critical thing there is something that happened that uh, i want us to look at and i take it because i saw kenya reacting um african countries there is a tracky of african countries that uh, were planning to initiate dialogue or other negotiation between russia and ukraine and that trachea is being headed by south african president cyril ramaphosa I, i've never gotten the right pronunciation for the first word so ramaphosa is reading that trachea and um, ramaphosa is reading that trachea the reason why it is in there is because of you know there is BRICS that is coming the idea of BRICS is Hubbard in Africa here. The anchor of BRICS in Africa is South Africa, even though other countries have also been being lobbied to join the BRICS. So when Ramaphosa had a delegation to go and meet Putin in Moscow, and I think uh, I cannot mention the name of the uh, of the Ukrainian president. I I can't get the pronunciation. In meet the Ukrainian president now. In that move, Cecil uh, Ramaphosa's delegation of 120, including some officials and uh, I think some soldiers that were armed, were locked, were detained in Poland, and they were blocked on their way to Moscow simply because they were saying, uh, the spokesperson of Ramaphosa is saying they had the documents that are needed. But the Poland administration is saying that some of them just had photocopies. They did not have the the, uh, the official copies of that um, of the of, of the certification that is needed. And because they were carrying weapons, they were not allowed in. They were not allowed to fly to go to Russia. So that detention has really shocked the country because it was actually bordering the fact that. Ramaphosa's security details is a bit, uh, is security is compromised. Security of a, a head of state is compromised because of that. But that has been going on there. So I saw our foreign affairs PS reacting and hitting on Poland on it. Yes, it might be wrong because um, it not might, it is wrong. President William Ruto was speaking in Germany recently said that Kenyan position is that um, there needs to be a ceasefire in the russia ukraine war because it has disrupted supply chain of the grain across the globe and africa as is adversely affected that is why there is the green sea initiative to allow for a crisis for the supply chain of um, the grains to africa because africa is now struggling with uh, uh, with the hunger that has emerged due to climate uh, climate change so President William Ruto's position on the Russia war that it needs to end because it has a hurt, it is hurting the economy in Africa. But I understand, and uh, that is what also I've gathered, that Kenya has reacted into it to it because we are not in it. Our president was not in was not aboard that plea. We did not send our soldiers there. But we complained and we reacted to it, saying, hitting on Poland that you know, they did something wrong. Yes, the whole world, or those who are sympathetic, know very well that it is wrong to detain the security details of a head of state because, simply because of uh, such satisfaction. And 
even if there is that, there is the security of the head of state that is a bit compromised. And you know, he's going to negotiate about a war, about ceasefire. So what has happened here is that um, we have reacted to it. Now, I understand that Trudeau wanted to be part, or rather part of the delegation, the UN delegation, to mediate on the same. I don't know how, but uh, I've got at this from Gabriel Oguda. I follow him on Twitter, so you can check his tweets. You realize that information is there. That President Tutu was also to be part of that mediation in the Ukrainian. But we've reacted. We seem not to be learning even from the South Sudan. And it is a warning to Africa. I've seen some uh, quarters, Twitter reacting that it borders racism. It is a clear message of how deep Europe is uncomfortable by the African dalliance with um, African countries that are having a soft spot with Russia. That's the truth. This war needs to end. But there are other European nations or other superpowers that will want to take credit from the end of this war by making sure that, you know what, if there is going to be ceasefire in Russia, between Russia and Ukraine, it's going to be from them. But they've made the blunder from the first point. And I want to believe that Africa stands a good ground to mediate this war. Because if you look at America, America is sympathetic to Russia, clearly. And they have already, they've already held their stand. They have even done some sanctions. They have even issued, issued some sanctions to countries that are sympathetic to Russia. There are also reports that they have been offering some... Um, logistical support or rather some 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 amari support to ukraine to fight putin to fight russia so they've gotten into it the truth of the matter here is that the europe or rather these superpowers have gotten into it and they're in it to get some credit they want to win so that if i spend i support ukraine and i win i retain my superpower position but then africa is divided because there are countries that are sympathetic to russia and Africa is sympathetic to both the countries, both Ukraine and Russia, because those two countries now strategically, they are strategic um, partners to the African countries in terms of the grain supply chain. They are the two largest producers of the grain in the world. So be it wheat, rice, maize, bit of it. And that is why uh, UDA is even now confirming that the grain problem is coming because of the Russian war. We are not learning a lot, and we need to learn. And I don't know what will just be making us know that, okay, fine, it is wrong for a Mafosa to be blocked, but uh, we can just keep our cool. We can just keep our silence. And it means silently that maybe we are part of whatever is going on there. I want to believe that uh, not everything is written on a paper. And not everything is said on TV. We need to get right and keep off a bit of this international diplomacy storm. We need to reduce getting ourselves into this diplomatic diplomacy storm. When I saw the PS doing that tweet, he was not speaking in his position as an, an international relations expert. A PS is speaking on behalf of the Kenyan government. And I want to believe that because our we are not yet strong, we need to keep off these diplomatic storms for quite some time. The reason we need to keep off is this. You know, in our region, we also have security threats. Just in East African region here, we have security threats. And, you know, uh, just was it Lamu? Or in Lamu, there was some attacks. We, we lost some of our soldiers there uganda here is one of our neighbors and has suffered two attacks within one month two little attack attack uh, attack like in, in in sudan in somalia so ugandan borders were ugandan soldiers were, were attacked by al-shabaab militia and they lost close to 37 uh they close they lost close to 37 soldiers 137 soldiers in attack. Today, I've also seen another report that they've lost some 25 students in another attack. 
this has been causing a lot of debate online because people are also thinking like the latest uh, laws, the, the latest uh, gay right laws that has been uh, passed, where Museveni has been so strong about, is is one of the reasons why he's become vulnerable. You know, and Sebo is also now in some sort of some quarantine. So we've had ourselves our country, we have local problems. And the more we need to reduce, you know, we need to reduce our dip, getting ourselves in such diplomatic storms. Like I still insist, President Tutu needs to do, knock himself out of that Sudan war. If you want to peace, and the two warring factions, one faction has said, I don't want you. Even the Igad itself should use the wisdom of knocking out William Ruto and getting an arbiter that is accepted by both the parties. If both the parties are accepting Salva Kiir, then work with Salva Kiir. And if they are knocking out William Ruto, they are knocking out William Ruto because they know very well that as a country, we are one of the countries in East Africa, Kenya and Ethiopia, that are enjoying military stability. And because of our military stability, we normally deploy military to warring countries. We deployed military to, to DRC Congo. And now we are also having an operation in Somalia. So, and of course that is happening because it's just an avenue of us getting a lot of money. So as we go there, come back with a lot of money. And even as a country, we really benefit. So the reason why I am saying, number one, we must keep off these diplomatic storms is ourselves, we are having our regional problems. We are not that safe. We even open our borders. So we can, there can always be a ripple effect. Number two, President William Ruto's legitimacy threshold is still not very much convincing local here we are not the threshold the legitimacy is still a problem there are other african countries that still believe and that are taking the voice of the opposition in this country that maybe some european nation the foreign infiltration in our election that has been said by the opposition and there are some countries even some European nations that still believe and take it that there was infiltration, me included. So that being that is there, the legitimacy threshold do not allow us to have that cloud. So let's not overrate, overrate ourselves. We should not overrate ourselves that we want to get into everything because for us, surely, I don't think it's it. Number four is the Nairobi factor. Nairobi is a business hub in East and Central Africa and lower Savannah, Sub-Sahara. Nairobi is epicenter. So let's not put Nairobi. Let's not get ourselves. The more we get ourselves into these diplomatic uh, thieves, we are also uh, sharing, making our investors to share away. And who is losing us as a country? I don't know what you think. But that is my position. We need to keep off a bit. Let's fight our local battles and win them fast before we think about the neighbor. That's my podcast.